I've played War Thunder for almost 10 years. No. Yes! <laughs> With over 800 videos, exactly a month from today, I become a 10 year veteran. Here's what I'm here! <laughs> so join me as we explore some of my favorite vehicles War Thunder has to offer. <laughs> ah! Fuck! Oh! Jesus! That scared the shit out of me! Don't honk like that! I'm in a 1930s bomber! Buy my decal. G'day, I'm Ash, and this is an R2Y2, specifically the version 1. And I'm going to be covering all three versions because they're essentially the same thing. They explore different flight principles. One is outboard engines, one is inboard, and then one is direct flow. Uh, so these things are all the same. They all have 30mm guns, they all carry an 800kg bomb, and they've got the Type 5 uh, 4 30mm uh, guns. So they're absolutely fantastic. The only difference is aerodynamics, speed, and a slight bit of maneuverability. I believe the V2 is actually the probably the best out of the lot, but the V3 is the quickest uh, machine on the block. And I really quite like these machines. Unfortunately, Galgen have said in the past that they were looking to replace these as soon as possible. So if you're grinding down a Japanese uh, bomber tree here, unlock all three of these vehicles because they will become at some point a rarer item that will be removed because these are fictitious aircraft the only model that was made was the version one didn't really fly but they did fly with propeller driven uh, uh sort of you know apparatus strapped to the front so there is that anyway other things to note uh they are all the same butter rating and obviously if you can get your hands on one do so other than that, they're 95,000 to research, but 270,000 to purchase. You can get extremely lucky with the guns, and I'm just going to do basic gameplay here before we go into the actual fun match here. Essentially, they are very, very similar to the ME262 series, and essentially, uh, with a lot of ammo, with 150 rounds per gun, they're very, very effective as an attacker or interceptor. Although, their interceptor spawn their bomber spawn that they used to have has been removed so functionality as a bomber aircraft is less these days more so that they just happen to be really good at uh, going head on with the aircraft or you know engaging in a first confrontation granted you're at the battle rating where it's early jets so this thing used to dominate because it used to be able to spawn up at a higher altitude rush towards the enemy air, air spawn and absolutely wreck havoc so used to be a lot more fun but uh, again it is pretty good it comes with two bombs a a ground ordnance bomb and then a navy armor piercing bomb which are both the same uh, sort of explosive filler version one two and three all feature the same combat flaps taker flaps and landing flaps they do not have air brakes or rest gear or a drag chute they feature the same mitsubishi ne330 engine with two uh, of them uh, the maximum altitude is roughly the same between two, 12,500 and about 13,000 meters the turn time is roughly the same about 31.5 to 30 uh, seconds and uh a 15 meter a climb in realistic battles and upgraded is 20 meters a second climb takeoff run is all the same at 750 meters now version one can do uh, 797 kilometers stock and 851 fully upgraded version two is a little bit different with uh 809 stock and 863 uh, fully upgraded the turn time is just a 0.3 slight higher and then version 3 is 811 kilometers and 860 uh, max with the same rate of climb and the same turn time so again quite interesting uh, but then again it is just it's very very versatile and very similar vehicles they're all slightly similar the really difference is the well the rate of climb and the turning ability i feel like version 2 is slightly better than all the other versions and sometimes the guns are better in version 3 i'm not sure what quite is about it but again the very maneuverable for early jet faces of prop aircraft frequently although it also faces all the early jets as well a very very high visibility cockpit if you're playing this in simulator and well a very decent all-round vision the guns are good enough to do some light target damage and some pillbox damage as well so there's that 
but it is an easy target it does not take damage particularly easy and the plane is nearly useless if the engines get hit if you have one of your engines out you're basically game over now the rudder is also like a big air brake it slows the aircraft down quite considerably so try to limit your rudder usage as much as possible uh, because well this thing does fly a little bit like a bus if you are at lower speeds and these things are incredibly uncommon. You hardly ever see any of them in realistic battles at all. They tend to be a bit of a ghost vessel, so to speak. They are rare for a number of reasons, because they initially had an air spawn and they were typically used as attacker aircraft in that role, where you'd feast on players that were just sort of getting to altitude and sort of just on the climb threshold of them either stalling out or just at their uh, ratio of efficient climb angle. So you'd catch players off guard and, and, and it really became sort of a bit of a persistent oh, issue. This was one of the very first aircraft that introduced the the, the issues with uh, fast jet bomber aircraft that, that really were a broken element of the game. Remember stuff like the Arado 234 and the early B-57s were really just you know, dominating uh, the top tier back in that day when all you had was a MiG-15 that couldn't necessarily catch some of the even earlier jets, couldn't really catch some of those, those early sort of vehicles and particularly these bombers. So overall, it's, it's lived through quite a lot of uh, interesting perplexity. And these three vehicles, they're unique in their designs. They've all got very, very strange uh, designs. But their statistics are rather similar. So I've kind of just bundled them all into this one video precisely because why the hell not? Anyway, let's get into another match and I'll showcase what happens when your enemy is completely oblivious to your surroundings because this is an interesting one so strap in for this one now i am flying the version 2 here it's got a weird intake on the leading edges of the wings that connect to the main part of the fuselage and essentially you have a very very versatile airframe that really does everything that you require obviously my squad mates are flying version 1 and version 3 retrospectively and this just was just a bit of a test to see if they were any better than each other when the answer is no uh, but in the right situation you can get to a pretty good fight considering that well the guns are incredibly powerful and this is probably the best thing about this machine other than the 800 kilogram bomb which used to absolutely devastate back in the day now the biggest thing that i can suggest for you is to start unlocking performance modules first and go for belts as soon as possible running stealth belts of all three variations is a hundred percent the way you should probably play this vehicle as the stock and even the universal you provided you can aim the tracer shells have half the he fillers that of the stealth belts so keep that in mind and obviously as these are fictitious aircraft besides from version one which is made in full mock-up there is a sense that these vehicles will be completely removed at some point like for example the tiger uh, 105 the flak uh, uh, what was it called the panther with the flak uh, turret on top and the panther 2 as well as vehicles like the mouse because these vehicles can't be balanced apparently despite the fact that it doesn't really hurt anyone to have these vehicles present in the game so i highly recommend you unlock these as soon as you possibly can the rumors are floating around that they're going to remove them this year although they have to find replacements for them and i guess that's why they've stalled considering it was 2022 when they did say that they were looking to replace them and they said they would indefinitely remove them from the game they normally don't remove things that people have unlocked they usually just move them into either the premium tech tree or whatever moving on to some combat now this is where things get a little bit spicy so i hope you're ready for some interesting commentary because this is going to get incredibly finicky as time goes on there's a couple of sabers 163s up there this is generally the tier that you really see seahawks are quite common as well it's going to get absolutely blasted all right here we go get a critical hit on the seahawk turn back around and head towards the f known f sabers are going vertical as they normally do i'm just going to try and keep up my speed teammates now engaging the seahawk that i just basically critical managed to actually get a kill on the uh seahawk okay next aircraft is the f9f absolutely ripped him in half we're going to pull back around and chase after the me163 we're going to fire a few shots towards him set him on fire get a critical hit on him 
Splash. And there we go, aircraft destroyed, another splash. And then F-86 is completely oblivious to his surroundings and I'm having a bit of a skill issue here. So I'm trying to locate where my Splash. shells are going. And there they go. Absolutely demolished the remainder of their sort of team there. Poor F-86. Speaking of F-86s. There goes another one for our fifth kill. And this is the point where I realise our whole entire team has completely failed around me while I've managed to kill everything that I've seen. Yeah, sometimes you don't have all the best luck. And again, this machine without one engine, as I mentioned earlier, wasn't particularly too effective. Kiwi's trying to go after the, the people that have attacked me. I think Elder has already died and succumbed to some damage. But uh, that is basically about all you can do with this machine in these days. Granted, the new 16 versus 16 has allowed for more diverse combat. So, you know, stuff like this doesn't happen too often shame but it could have been a really really important match alas it's not to be so I, I was hoping that there was going to be more friendlies available anyway let's move on to the hangar screen and we'll end up this video hopefully you've enjoyed uh, a quick look at these three aircraft very 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 brief uh, introduction to the three of the, my favorite sort of japanese aircraft and with that, oh, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the uh, ongoing series. We're going to pause it for tomorrow as it's Anzac Day, and we'll be back with you shortly. So thanks for watching. My name is Ash, and I'll catch you next one. Bye-bye.